Uh, all right, so we're going to take some of our questions that have been submitted from the chat throughout the show. Uh, we're going to jump right in. Our first one comes from uh, Paige Smells Weird is their name. So sorry, Paige. Uh, they ask, is the, kid, <laughs> is the kid who sat on the suction prototype okay? Yeah, he's fine. fine. <laughs> <laughs> they, the, children fall all the time. Like, <laughs> like, and he's just a big child. And he's not here to defend himself. So Cor Corey is clearly not a teacher, by the way. <laughs> Children will be okay, you know. The they liability fall. They're, doesn't matter. They're robust. Look at that black. There's that foam that you landed on underneath. He's fine. Well, I run so how, people with robots all the time, so. So just out of curiosity, how like what version of the suction climb prototype is this that? This was the video first one. I think okay. sure. And, what was what, what was on that suction cup? Um. It the lunch tray it was our first suction cup was a lunch tray and we uh used that for suction and then we just attached a two by four to it <laughs> to see if uh it would actually suck onto the hab well it looks like it had it for a minute or two it had it and that was an early version of the vacuum too we didn't even use that vacuum how early on in build season was that um this was, I don't know, probably the, near the end of week one. Okay, so the, pretty early the, on. The video yeah. was uploaded, it says on, uh, oh, oh, never mind. I, said, I thought it said January 23rd, so it says July 23rd. Never mind. <laughs> so, so, yeah, so you guys were obviously moving quick on that, which makes sense. You know, I, on those key mechanisms, I think the biggest thing is you always, you know, if you have a key mechanism you think is really critical, you, you got to, like, jump on it right away, right? And the, and the climb this year was huge, so... Yeah, that might have been week four when we done it. We did do no. oh, suction no. tests. I think that may have been... Yeah, week four may have been the time we did that. Okay. Uh, all right, our next question comes from uh, Yuseani. I don't know how to say it, but anyway, uh, how does 2767 make members take the initiative to keep working hard and being motivated? It's a good question. That's a really good question. Um... Personally, how do I, I'm how, really. How do, how do we keep you working? Yeah, <laughs> um, keep me fed with goldfish. That's true. Um, <laughs> That's what I'm gonna yeah. Feed the boy. Um, uh, yeah, but yeah, yeah, just really interested. And so, working is. I I go to Midlink. I work, and I really enjoy it. So, and maybe I work too much. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but I I personally found great joy in working. So I had no problem with that. <laughs> Yeah, same for me. I just wanted to be there all the time. And the more you're involved, the more you get out of it. So mm -hmm. it's a lot. Uh, so just being there, you get experiences that you could get nowhere else. So I think that also motivates people to keep uh, being there and working. Mm -hmm. I think we've really established a culture that's hopefully going to stay there for a long time of really hardworking and um, curious students. Um, so, and that just keeps bringing people back. Cool. I, I will say I can attest to the food comment. Like, like that's the biggest thing we always ask our parents to help with it more yep. than anything else is Same like, here. if you just, if you keep the team fed, like it's amazing how much more people will stay and work because they're just in better moods. Yep. Sure, she so. got a little hangry tonight because we didn't bring food, and her mom had to go get her McDonald's. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I know I get super irritated if I don't eat for a small period of time. <laughs> so there you go, everybody. The, the real key to having a world champion robot is yep. food. So there Clip you go. Bars and jerky. Yeah. <laughs> Clip bars and jerky. What a meal. Uh, all right, next question is from uh, Ryan Duenio from 1720. He asked, how dope was that triple climb at IRI? Amazing. <laughs> how, how, ner how nervous were you guys while it was happening? I was absolutely terrified because I was, the actual, I was actually pushing the button. So I couldn't see it at all. So I was just scared out of my mind that it, would, it wouldn't fall off. I was, like that was the biggest thing for me not being able to see what was happening yeah yeah there was a moment here when we, we climb ahead of spectrum and then spectrum comes up like underneath of us and then you and then our bumpers like rubbed and then we like we got pushed to the side and 
it was awesome. I mean, Ryan was with us, I think, and he was behind, you know, 17, 20 got up and we had him go climb at like 70 seconds, like ridiculously early. <laughs> and, um, I was inspector and we looked at it and we we're like, we got the dimensions for it. Let's do it. Yeah. I think what a lot of people don't realize who like haven't been behind the glass for a match this season is that like the way that have was constructed, like even with not doing a triple climb, like just climbing by yourself, like you cannot, you cannot see the the level one have in front of level three. Like there's, you can't see it there. Like I know we had one match where like there's a ball sitting right there and it's like, you'll never know that as a driver because nope. like you, you cannot see it. So it's like a lot of times I don't think people understand like just how hard it is sometimes when you can't see stuff. So then, you know, for you guys having 1720 also then sitting there too, like, yeah, that had to be super nerve wracking, but it was, yeah, it was really cool to see live. So it was really planned out. So uh, the next question comes from Evan S on 2410. Uh, they ask, what was the least favorite thing with the swerves? Um, so, you know, I mean, is there anything that you guys uh, have had problems with on it in the past or maybe one thing you don't like about it? Um, yeah, there's a lot of things that I, well, I really like the swerves, <laughs> but there's also a lot of things I don't like about the swerves. <laughs> what? As a programmer. You suck those words back uh, in your mouth. Traitor. Yeah, <laughs> as a programmer. It feels always, um, we're changing some things this summer, but um, but the this year we had to re-zero, realign the wheels a bunch. Um, and so that took time. Um, and then also we always just have to worry about our angle, our gyro position. And so sometimes you'll see the programmers all on the field with their hands out and like human protractors and compasses and we're <laughs> trying to figure things out, all the angles. Um, and so the code is a bit more complicated than it should yeah. be. I, I, to maybe to elaborate on that real quick, just because, I mean, obviously, like, you know, we, we've done Swerve sort of in the mm -hmm. past, um, and, and I know that the, one of the big challenges always with Swerve is the gyro heading and, like, drift mm -hmm. and air on the gyro over a match. And, I mean, so is there anything specific you guys do to try to mitigate that air, or how do you go about, you know, re-zeroing, if, if you are re-zeroing during a match? Like, maybe um, what your process is on that. Our driver can just drive up next to the wall and re-zero the gyro, um, but we usually see less than... I think it's one and a half degrees per mi uh, oh. per two minutes or something. That's um, that's really good. So it's we use the the Navex. Navex. Okay. Cool. Um, all right. Next question is, uh, what was your guys' favorite part of IRI from uh, Super Forty Three Ninety Nine? Oh, Sherston, what was your favorite part? Um, the triple climb was dope, but <laughs> I think, uh, just being like watching Jack drive defense while behind the glass because I didn't I couldn't move anything but like just watching it was like that's insane because <laughs> I, I I felt more nervous just because I wasn't doing anything so I was just like oh my gosh so I think Jack playing defense was one of my favorite parts yeah yes. I really like Jack when Jack played defense, um, you put up a really, really good fight. It yeah, way to send fun. 330 home on their last match ever, guys. Nice job there. Thanks. Thanks. Yeah, way to go. <laughs> well, uh, I'll say it was an honor to play with 330 in their last match. Um, yes, definitely. The, the atmosphere when, like, people are supposed to be picking up their robots and leaving the field, and everybody just, like, I think it was, like, I don't know, was, like five minutes of people just standing and clapping for them. Um, the standing ovation and just being there on the field and seeing that happen was like just goosebumps. It was yeah, it was really cool. Quite the sight to see for sure. All right. Uh, next question comes from Randomizer Seven Seven, our first giveaway winner. Actually, uh, asks what CAD program do you guys use? And maybe to expand on that, yeah, you know, like who who works on your guys' CAD and and kind of how do you guys break that down on your team? We've had a lot of, I don't know which program we've used, but um, there's a lot of student involvement this year. Um, the whole Trident was designed and developed by two students, um, and they put a lot of effort into that, and we're really happy about the student involvement. Yep. Yep. Um, we use Creo. Um, a lot of that is sent for Strikers, one of the main sponsors, and they okay. use Creo professionally, so a lot of that is driven by what access the mentors have access to and the same goes with comes up with software right the 
the mentors are efficient in LabVIEW or Java or C++. Therefore, that's what we're using because that's how I can help you. Um, we've looked at some speaking other stuff. Which, go ahead. I was just I was just going to say, speaking of which, what programming language do you guys use? I guess uh, that's a good question also. So a robot code this year was written in Java and Kotlin. Um, but then our vision application, our custom Python, was written in uh, OpenCV. So with Python and OpenCV um, with FRC vision image on Raspberry Pi. Um, but then we'll do all sorts of testing um, in Jupyter Notebooks with Python too. Um, we really just find the right language. Yeah. For the now, job. to be fair, there was other students who didn't use Creo that were still putting parts on the robot. Um, yeah. So they would use their either SolidWorks or other software they had available. And because we're printing them, they just had to send the file over and we'd print that section and then like reverse engineer it back into Creo. Um, so Creo is the primary, but we're also making sure students are using what they're comfortable with during this season. Cool. Uh, what, uh, this is from uh, Sapien I asks, what are all the tubes on your cart? On your robot cart, I'm assuming he's talking about. Um, so we call those tubes our <laughs> udders, and they're hooked up to a vacuum, so we can put them onto our drive motors when they get too hot and just suck all of the hot air out of them. Yep. So we, uh, so they won't get too hot or overheat, and it's a quicker way to cool down than touching a cold water bottle than touching the motor, which, which can has happened. be dangerous. <laughs> <laughs> So yeah, it has to do with the pros and getting the heat out of them. And there's a you can see on the thing that you can see what Sherson's talking about there with the hoses. It looks like a big octopus thing. Um, the motors got really really hot in 2017. Therefore, this thing was created for 2018. We might have even had that in 2000. I think we actually had that in 2017. I thought I was gonna say I thought I saw it in 17. Yeah, it, yeah. It was just to cool the motors and it just draws heat through the pros. That's all it's used for. And right now it mainly gets used in uh, playoffs. Mm -hmm. and at the shop to cool motors during practice and don't you guys have like a lazy susan thing that the robot sits on too yeah and yeah. the robot sits on a lazy susan so it's a swerve drive that spins so if you need to work on a certain module you can just spin it to that to that edge i think you guys probably have the most creative robot cart i've seen ever and, and it's a gurney and it goes up and down and it goes up and down <laughs> and it spins to like a swerve drive i really like it <laughs> All right, uh, Thompson818 asks, uh, do you have any planned changes to your Swerve design for the future? I know uh, you alluded to some things in the uh, or a little bit earlier. Is there anything you guys want to mention? Or are you keeping that under wraps for now? Or There is things we are working on. We are constantly iterating. Yeah. We'll see if they work. They might fail. All right, fair we don't enough. Know yet. <laughs> fair enough. Uh, and then next question is from, sorry, uh, Tyler copied this question in at like size eight font, so I can't read it. Uh, Pack Panda 786 asks, uh, when will your 2019 code be released? Or will it, I guess, be it released? Um, it'll definitely be released. Um, we're cleaning things up right now, making it look pretty, uh, and hopefully it'll be released oh, probably in the next month. Um, I think we'll do it before the last last open uh, off season events. Cool, I'm sure. Like I know, I know we're waiting to look at it. Um, so I'm definitely curious to see it, uh, and I'm sure many others are as well. Uh, next question actually wasn't asked, but it's something uh, Tyler just thought of. Oh, oh, or it's in there and I missed it. Uh, so the question is, uh, how do you guys go about training your drivers, uh, maybe in the off season and in the regular season, and and maybe how you pick new drivers too as well. Sherson, how did we train you last year? Um, so I took a test and I drove the 2017 bot to first get um, to be able to be a driver. So that was like my tryout. Um, and then during uh, off season, I would just like practice with that bot um, so I could get in sync with Jack. Uh, and then during um, build season before comp, once we have our proto bot, we um, just practiced a bunch. We 
c practiced every moment we could. So that was one of the biggest things to just always practice, 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 practice. Yeah, Sam. So there's the written test. Um, it normally has to do with uh, older game. There is then a practical test of the actual like operating of the robot. And then we also go to off-season events to get them warmed up. And if you look at I think on the Blue Alliance right now, um, we're currently signed up. I don't think it's actually on the Blue Alliance. We're actually going to three off-season events still. Um, one for August, one in September, one in October to get the new driver um, ready for the 2020 season. Can you say what uh, off-seasons they are that you're going to? Uh, the Mad Mitten Robo Rodeo. Uh, that, that's August 10th that's for anybody. August out there 10th. Yep. Uh, then there stream is fun. Stream, stream dot fun. Um, there's the FSU Robo Day, which is in September. I think the last weekend in September. And then uh, WMRI, which we've been going to for quite a few years. That is October 19, I believe. So those awesome. are the three we'll be attending. Hopefully the robot makes it. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, yeah, that's so. definitely a struggle. Yeah, we've gone through three off seasons now already. It was two of them we use both robots on, and it's like a constant effort to just keep the robots going. So, I feel your pain. Uh, it's but it's a hundred. They're they're a hundred. Uh, doing off seasons are like a hundred percent worth it for the experience. Not just for the drivers, but like new kids in the pit, like getting the opportunity mm -hmm. to like experience what it's like to have to like get the ro keep the robot running at an event and all that kind of effort. Um, so highly recommend for all all teams out there. Um, and I think that's it. I think that was our last question we have to go over. Uh, probably a good time to draw uh, for our second winner of the swag pack that 2767 has graciously donated. So, Tyler, why don't you go ahead and roll for that? Yeah, that's your last chance to get in with two champs. Uh, if you're one again for this giveaway, don't forget you're going to win. Uh, of course, what's shown on screen here, a Sentinel board and then either a hoodie or a T-shirt. And you got to make sure you send us uh, which one you want, what size you wear. And then, of course, all the other good stuff, like we need to know your name, your mailing address. Believe it or not, we're going to mail you something. Mail exists, and we need that information from you so we can send it out to you. Uh, so the winner of this giveaway, and by the way, thanks again to 2767 for being awesome uh, with it, uh, is going to be uh, Shelby A. Shelby A subscriber. You know what that means? Woo! Rigged emotes in chat, everybody. Because the subscriber won, we clearly rigged it for them. Lots and lots of rigged emotes because we truly rigged it for our subscribers. Even though the first person won wasn't a subscriber, but then they did subscribe. So we pre rigged it for them. That's kind of the way it works. It was they only mm -hmm. win if they subscribed afterwards. Yes, yeah, so, yes, actually. If you didn't subscribe, that's that's why. So. Tyler, Tyler immediately messages you after you win and you're not a subscriber and goes, you better subscribe. <laughs> <laughs> or you're not getting it. It's a blackmail. We're poor guys. Come on. We need, we need funds. <laughs> we, we run on that shoestring budget, you know. And hey, it might not even cost you money, right? Because hey, Amazon Twitch Prime sub, you might Ooh, have it available for plug. free if you have Amazon Prime. Just saying, you know. So uh, with that said, uh, we're coming to the end of our show. Uh, real quick, before we wrap it up for the night, uh, do you guys, 2767, do you guys have anything coming up that you'd like to promote or uh, any kind of takeaways from this past season? Anything you want to talk about? Justin, you want to start? We'll, come, we'll go around the table. I do not want to start. <laughs> okay, Robert, start. Um, I guess I just, I had a lot of fun this season, so this is my last season. Um I put a lot of work into the robot. A lot of other students, a lot of other seniors put a lot of, lot of work, time and effort into it. And we're all kind of graduating now. So yeah, I think it's going to be a really interesting all next year. Yeah, all, all 15 of us. Um, but it's going to be really, really, really so well. yeah. yeah, I'm excited to see what happens next year with you guys. Hey, I don't think we ever asked. How many, how many students do you guys have on your team generally? Um, every year? Yeah, um, somewhere between like 35 to 50. And it varies on like how active the members are, right? Sure. So like the official account might be fifty, but the actual actual like um, students are able to attend might be ranging between meetings. Cool. Do you guys have anything coming up you guys want to promote real quick? Other um, than you know your off seasons you're competing. I think in? October twenty five in West Michigan we're hosting a uh, workshop. Uh, we did it last year, and we're going to do it again this year. There's going to be a bunch of mentors and a bunch of different teams doing workshops. I'm doing one on like just 
strategy on how to break down a match and, and different moves. There's stuff on there with Swerve and Drivetrains and C++ and Java, LabVIEW, um, motors, mechanisms. So there's a good workshop that we put on here in West Michigan. Um, and as soon as we start ironing out the details, I'm sure we'll get that information out on Chief to invite people to come check out. Very cool. So with that said, that is going to do it for tonight's show. We hope everyone out there watching enjoyed the show and that you all learned a lot from it. I certainly did. Uh, I need to give a massive thanks to our awesome guests from 2767 for volunteering to come on the show tonight and for giving us all so much information about what makes them so amazing. I uh, hope you guys had fun being on the show. Yeah, um, thanks. Thank thank you. Us, Nick. Yeah, and then uh, Tyler, real quick before we go, is going to read off our latest supporters of First Updates Now and maybe talk about some future streams coming up. Tyler? Absolutely, yeah. I'd love to talk about a, a few things. First off, let's get some big shout-outs. And uh, I know some people subscribed yesterday, and it's not showing up on my list, so I do apologize about that. But uh, people since that I are currently showing up on my list, Snap the Sword, the Tier 1 sub, RJ919, Tier 1, Delph Tier 1, Chrono King, Eight months, the Truffle Hunter, three months, Nate Nate fifty two with two months, Luigi two nine three seven one says robots are dope. Uh, Evan S twenty four ten eight months of support. Uh, Ryan Donio coming in twenty nine months. Holy crap, buddy! Uh, Sapien I tier one. Thank you so much. Uh, Rude fifty seven uh, three months as I'm committed to fun. Lots of bits coming in from Golfer Randomizer seventy seven the tier one sub. Uh, and uh, by the way, like I said, if I miss anybody, I'm sorry. Sometimes our list thing kind of gets a little messy, and I knew we had a few yesterday. Hey guys, if you were a sub and you didn't check uh we do have some sub exclusive things yesterday we actually did a town hall yesterday uh where we went into the depths of fun what's going on what were our stats what were our feedback story results that sort of thing so you get a lot of cool stuff for being sub not just free emotes you can post anywhere around twitch especially on uh, all the first streams that you want uh but a lot of cool stuff that we do for that. Don't forget to check out our Patreon at uh, patreon.com forward slash first updates now. And uh, show's coming up, guys. Tomorrow we have an FTC CAD challenge show. So if you like watching the one for FRC on the CADathon, uh, 60, FRC 6800, and I, and I top my head, I forget the FTC team name that's actually running it, but Valor out of Texas uh, has about 40 teams that we're going to be doing a uh, CAD challenge judging and breakdown with a bunch of cool giveaways from Go Builda. Uh, so make sure you check that out at 8.30 p.m. Eastern tomorrow. Uh, so even if you're not in the FTC, lots of cool designs coming through. Uh, and then this weekend on Saturday, uh, I myself will actually be at the uh, Rock River uh, off-season competition or R2OC. We are also streaming that as well at twitch.tv forward slash first updates now. One last thing, Corey, I would be remiss if I didn't give you a plug. And uh, Stryker is a big uh, sponsor, I know, of your team, of course, with the name, and then uh, as well, too, in first and big fans of first. So can you tell us a little bit what's going on with Stryker? Okay. Um, so Stryker is a uh, big sponsor of Strike Force. We are putting me on the spot here, Tyler. Um, hey, it's, it's free publicity, man. You got to be ready yeah, for I that. know, man. I know. Um, Stryker is a big uh, contributor to Strike Force. We are very interested in what – partnership striker can get with first to see what first can provide for striker essentially we're looking for really good talent at first events in a nutshell we're working on it all right so if you want to if you're interested in working at striker it sounds like you should hit Corey up uh so with that said though we're going to give a huge thanks to our editor-in-chief tyler for producing tonight's show and if you like this show or the other content that fun produces be sure to click that green follow button at the top to keep up with all the shows and videos we post on twitch and it'll it'll notify you the next time we're live and if you would like to help support us then uh feel free to click that purple subscribe box at the top uh, like we said a couple times tonight, you might have a free Twitch Prime sub available if you have your Amazon Prime account linked up. So uh, go ahead and check on that. And with that said, we're going to do it. That's going to do it. Uh, thanks a lot for watching FRC Deep Dive. If you guys have any suggestions on who you would like to see next on the show, uh, let us know on our Discord or on Chief Delphi. Uh, maybe thanks for watching. If you want more fun content, be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos. You can also directly help support fun by visiting our Patreon at patreon.com forward slash first updates now or by subscribing at twitch.tv forward slash first updates now. Thank you to all of our co-executive producers keeping fun loud, live, and independent.